What is going on, y'all? Welcome back to another episode of the I Formation Podcast here with Ben Hall and my guy, Laron McLean. Today, we got a, a very exciting guest on. We're finally getting him on. Um, but before we start, how you doing today, Laron? Man, I'm good. I'm good. Blessed, man. Blessed to do another show. You know what I'm saying? Uh, thankful for our guests on today. Uh, like we always say, man, like, subscribe. You know what I'm saying? Follow us on everything. Listen to us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify podcast, uh, podcast, you know what I'm saying? Everything, you know what I'm saying? So. Go ahead, man. We would like to welcome on Super Bowl winning cornerback, Kerry Williams. Um, you know, great career in the NFL, played with a ton of different teams, won a Super Bowl with the Ravens, awesome with the Ravens. It was really cool to see, you know, him win a Super Bowl with the Ravens. But uh, how you doing today, Kerry? I'm doing great, man. I'm blessed, man. I'm I'm grateful for the opportunity, man. Thank you for this chance, man. Thank you all for having me. Yeah, I'm uh, really excited to have you on. And and the first question, which I usually start with all, you know, former players, you know, how have the past few months slash years been for you, you know, since you've been out of football? It's been good, man. I've been uh, just doing daddy duties, man. Um, and I've been tinkering with trying to coach, trying to get my foot in the coaching. I've also been uh, studying for the LSAT. Um, I plan on taking that in January. So, you know, I, I'm just trying to make moves, man, trying to do things, trying to elevate myself and my family. Laurent, you can go. Oh man, it's dope. Oh man, it's dope. That's dope. You say taking the uh, the L set and all that, man. That's 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 dead. That's live. That's live. That's live. But uh, I just want to say uh, for for culture, for culture wise, man, I'm down here coaching high school ball. What level? What level? What level? Of coach you trying to get in? What uh, what level are you trying to get on? Shoot, man, I'm trying to get anywhere, man. I've been trying for the last couple years to get on. You know. Uh, I guess what they say is you you got to talk to a bunch of guys that you played with, a bunch of guys that, you know, you played under. And unfortunately, I haven't had that opportunity. But uh, this year, um, I went to Wake Forest with uh, Coach Dave Clawson. Coach Clawson had coached me at Fordham. He gave me an opportunity to come out there and kind of like shadow and look around and be out there on, on the field and uh, talk to a couple of those guys. And that was a great experience. And then I also did the – the minority internship with the NFL. So I went to Baltimore um, in May. And then after that, I went to uh, LA and was with the Chargers. So that was dope. That was a great experience too. So I'm really into, you know, anywhere between college uh, and uh, NFL, uh, but really I'm just trying to get my feet wet, man. If I can get into high school and do whatever, man, I'm good with that as well. Uh, and like I said, just as a backup plan, I've been doing uh, my studying for the LSAT and trying to continue in something that, you know, it's been a long time dream for me uh, oh. since I was a little boy. Okay. 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 That's hard. That's hard. That's hard. So, so what, uh, what, when was your last year? When, when was the last year? Uh, I, I you, think it was yeah, 16, yeah, 16. 16 playoffs probably was uh, with, uh, it was with the Washington uh, Redskins at the time. They did the commanders. So um yeah, I was out there for one game and we played Green Bay. And and that was the end of my career after that. You just, it was it was your decision or it was your decision or you uh or it was theirs for real. I mean, uh, I feel like it was theirs. I feel okay. like it was theirs. Um, but also too, man, I was fighting a lot of injuries too, man. I was trying to uh play through a bunch of injuries, man. I had uh torn labrum in my hip. In 2011, I played through the season, got surgery in 2012. We ended up winning the Super Bowl that year. Um, uh, so, like, I've been – it's been nagging injuries and stuff like that that was going through, and I was trying to fight to, you know, stay afloat in a lot of places, but I wasn't saying that I was hurt. Um, so I was playing through injuries, man, and at that time I was at a point where, you know, I don't know if football meant that much to me. You know what I mean? Um, I had uh, – just had recently – uh, had a, another daughter at the time and uh, we was trying to expand our family, me and my wife. So it was a lot of things at that point that j really just didn't, you know, uh, football wasn't really at the forefront of my mind. And it was, you know, it was amongst other things, amongst other things, but, you know, it just, you know, you never, I, I don't think anybody gets an opportunity to say, yeah, I'm, I'm done. I mean, it's it's never on, under their willpower. I think it's, you know, the league is what are they going to tell you? Hey, look, we don't want you no more. It is what it is. But I did work out with Chicago. And when Chicago told me they didn't want me, I was like, well, it's, it's over for me. I'm done. Yeah. I feel you. You go ahead, man. 
So you, you kind of touched on it. You played one game with the, the Redskins at the time that year. Yeah. How tough was that for you? Because you played with Seattle earlier in the year, right? Yeah, yeah, man. Like, I'm going to be honest with you, it left a bad taste in my mouth, man. Like, just that whole scenario in Seattle, it just left a bad taste in my mouth. And then coming off of the Eagles situation, the you know, the year before that, that left a bad taste in my mouth, too. So it was a lot of things that was going on that uh, really football wasn't at the forefront of my mind. I didn't love it as much. It wasn't, you know, it's different locker rooms. You know I mean? It's different people, different vibes, different organizations, learning different techniques, um, trying to figure out different coverages and things like that. And it was at a point where it just wasn't fun no more. And I wasn't out there having the greatest time of my life. So, um, you know, it was during that time when I just felt like it was, you know, it was probably over. So how tough was that playoff game? You know, you're going from Seattle to the Redskins to play one game and learning a new defensive playbook. How, how tough was that? Yeah, I mean, it was – I mean, it, it, it's all the same, X's and O's to some degree. Like I said, it's some, somewhat – was techniques. You know what I mean? Seattle technique was totally different from any other techniques that I used in a league previous to it. Um, and it was a lot of thinking involved. You know what I mean? I wasn't out there just playing freely. Um, and so – things didn't go the way I wanted to in Seattle, but, you know, they, they had a great team. They had great coaching staff. They had a great bunch of guys there, but I just wasn't, I just, it just didn't fit. So um, when I went to Washington, uh, like I said, it was a bad taste in my mouth with the league. I just kind of went to see if I could develop that love for the game again and uh, get out there and play in this, you know, playoffs and it's an amped up atmosphere and all that stuff. It was a great atmosphere. It was great, a great opportunity. Um, but like I said, I, I just felt like, you know, with the circumstances that went on and things that transpired in my life at that time, it was just, it wasn't the right fit. But Washington, I had a good time and I enjoyed it for that week. And, and uh, unfortunately, we couldn't win, but, um, you know, it, it, it was still a great experience for me. So now before those and, and Philly, you were in Baltimore. We kind of talked about this a little bit before. How, like, what what was your time in Baltimore like? You know, we usually get guys on, like, the, for the Ravens players we had on, we talk about their time in Baltimore. And LeBron always says, like, going away from Baltimore really was tough for him be, just because of how well and how good the locker room was in Baltimore and the coaching staff and all that. So what was it like for your time in Baltimore? Man, it was un unbelievable, man. Like, the, the camaraderie, man, it was genuine love. It was genuine uh, appreciation for one another. It was, uh, you know, everybody worked hard and strived hard to be the best they could possibly be because their best made the team its best. And, um, man, everybody just loved the game, man, from the coaches all the way down to, you know, the equipment men and the firefighters that worked in the equipment room, wanted to see everybody be successful, man. The whole organization from top to bottom was absolutely A1. So a lot of times I, didn't, I played for the Titans, got drafted there. Um, and, you know, spent some time there, which was great. The organization was cool, too. But it's not like it wasn't nothing. I, I don't care where I went. No, nothing compared to Baltimore from a coaching standpoint, from a locker room standpoint, from, you know, a, a camaraderie standpoint, from a genuine love for one another. I actually would give my right arm for those guys on the field if I could. Um, and I never felt that in any other situation. And there's no disrespect to no, nobody else and no other organization. I just didn't feel that. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, LeBron, you can go. Man, I, 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 can, I, can, I can vouch for that. You know what I'm saying? Even when I went to Kansas City, you know what I'm saying? Then going to San, uh, when, when I went to San Diego, man, it was so different, so different than Baltimore. And all, I say the same thing, brother. Everything was different. You know what I'm saying? From the way we – from the way we ate, from the way they fed us, from the way they took care of us, everything, everything was different. Everything was different. But man, hey, I want I want you to touch I want you to uh touch base on uh how was it how was it playing for hardball, man? How was it playing for hardball? I always ask the guys that too. I say this, man. Um it, I I came in in 2009. So that was his second year coaching, I believe. Yeah. Um, yeah, man, he was a young coach, man. Um trying to make a name for itself, uh, trying to gain the 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 locker room and, you know, trying to galvanize guys. Um, you know, it was a great experience, man. Uh, now when I went back in May, it was a whole evolution of the brother. So, you know, he, you know, he was, he was tough early on, man. Just, I'm going to keep it a hundred. He was tough early on and he, he 
had stuff to prove, man. And he had a bunch of veterans in the locker room that's been around the game for multiple years, guys that won the Super Bowl, man, and know how to win in the playoffs. And uh, it, it was – I say it was the time where you know it was just those those guys in the locker room were different, man. That whole like I said, the Ravens is a different organization, man. The locker room mm-hmm. has so much effect on what went on in the daytime, on the everyday, man. And it was it was good to see the leadership, man, and and those guys uh, take over in some cases um, because like sometimes how about wanted to do certain things, and some guys like nah, man, we're gonna do it this way because this was gonna be better for the team. You know what I mean? Yeah, and, yeah. yeah. You know, I, I respect those guys for doing it. And then I also got to tip my hat off to, to Hearts for not even allowing that stuff to really, like, affect him as a coach. You know what I mean? He continued to come in each and every day, and he wanted the best for everybody in the locker room. And I think, uh, you know, now that I see him, he's, he's more of a player's coach now, and he allows guys to truly be who the heck they want to be um, in the locker room and outside of the locker room, and it's, it's never anything personal. So I can respect that now about his his coaching tenure now, man. He's one of the best in the NFL and uh, yeah. hands down one of the best coaches that I played under. Indeed, 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 man. Qu- oh, quick, quick question: when when did it uh when did it uh click when did it click for you though when you was in the league when you was in the NFL when did it click for you knowing that you know what I'm saying you could play in this league you could guard anybody you know what I'm saying because you. You became you became locked down. You you became locked down, man, for a second, man. Can't throw nothing on you. Yeah. Um. Shoot, man. I went to Washburn University, man. D two school, man. And throughout my whole like process of going to the NFL, every every scout was like, man, you ain't gonna do it, man. You playing on a high school level, and these guys in the NFL or whatever. And they, they were saying all different types of stuff about, you know, what I could could not do physically um but they never was able to measure my heart my determination my grind um you know I was just fearless man I ain't give a damn who was in front of me you know what I mean I, I was gonna play them tough and I was gonna compete at the ball whenever I got an opportunity so like when it clicked for me it clicked for me when I was playing against practicing against all these big name guys that went to these big colleges and I was hearing all of these scouts uh, rem- reminisce about hearing, you know, listening to the, what these guys had to say about all the negative stuff that I was bringing to the yeah. table. And I'm like, man, these guys then went to, you know, the University of Miami. These guys then went to all these. They don't want national championships. Can't catch a ball on me. So at the end of the day, yeah, I figured it out. When I figured it out, I could play. I played with a supreme confidence. And uh, I played with just this fearlessness, man. And then I think, too, the the Ravens organization and you know what that stood for that defense um and being a part of that that legendary defense and being a part of something that that's bigger than you that really motivated me because everybody was you know going to be on the A game and I had to make sure that I wasn't going to be the weakest link either so um it clicked for me probably my once I got in 09 my second year like that's when it clicked when I started seeing guys really respecting me for who I was, man. And I remember um, in 2010, um, Derek Mason, he was doing one-on-ones and, and D Mace was, got upset. Um, and I wasn't playing in, I was more like a special teams guy. And D Mace got upset and was like, why the hell this dude ain't playing? He did that in front of everybody at practice. And I was like, shoot, appreciate it. Because the next week I was added in on, um, you know, a big nickel package after that. If it wasn't yeah. for that dude saying what he said, about me, I don't know. I probably would have been, you know, primarily a special teams guy. And I don't know where my career would have went. Uh, but but I thank, I thank God for that opportunity. I thank God for Derek Mason. Every time I see him, I thank him for that. Because it really, you know, when you coming from a D2 school, man, and you coming from a small school and people don't have many expectations for you, it, you almost got to play every day like a game. So, yeah. you know, that was my mentality every day. And, you know, and like I said, towards the end of my career, I just couldn't hold up. My body just was tired and it just didn't allow me to continue on. Indeed, indeed. You go ahead, Ben. So you, you talked about playing for that legendary defense. What I had to ask, what was it like playing in that secondary with Ed Reed and how much did you learn from him in the time you spent playing with him? Man, priceless moments, dog. Priceless moments with that man. Um, 
I used to go over his house, man. He used to show me his regimen. He used to show me all the stuff he used to do, man, and all the money he spent. I ain't had that type of money to spend that type of money on, <laughs> on you know, off the field things. And, you know, but, man, the type of stuff he, he invested in himself, man, was was remarkable, man. He had masseuses. He had doctors. He had, uh, you know, chiropractors. He had everything there at his house, man. And and it was dope for him to even bring me into that, man, especially me being a, like I said, I ain't come from nobody. I ain't come from nothing. I'm a dude that's from a division two school. I ain't go to the university of Miami. I didn't play at, you know, North Carolina, any, you know, Alabama for that matter. I didn't go to any of those places. Wasn't even recruited by those guys. You know what I mean? So for him to take me in up under me, that's what I mean by the camaraderie, man. The, the locker room was just different. It was a different breed of people, man. And, um, and he always wanted everybody to be their very best, man. I remember him setting out these cones and doing these methodical drills with, you know, saying, hey, Carrie, this will help you out with your breaks, breaking inside, breaking outside. Um, I remember him just going over film at his house, man. He took me in, man. I remember his mom used to come in and we used to have those uh, that red beans and rice, man. She used to bring in from New Orleans. and uh, <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, he actually made me a part of his family. Like, I, I appreciated that. And that means so much to me, man. And um, and I learned so much, man, about coverages. I remember um, I remember one, one, one uh, night we was going over something. And he had brought up something from, like, six or seven weeks ago. We're like, bro, I'm thinking in my head, dog, they're not going to run this play. Six or seven weeks ago. And they run it against us, and he gets an interception that week, man. And then so it makes me go into the lab. And I remember playing the, the Cleveland Browns on a Thursday night. I think it was Thursday, maybe it was Sunday. Brandon night. Whedon. It might have been Thursday. Yeah. Thursday night, yeah. Yeah, but but that play they had ran it against San Diego probably last year. And it was a deep ball uh clip. He used to watch the deep ball clips, man, from years ago. And he said they might in incorporate this because this was the uh, officer coordinator there, and he ran a hit. Man, I seen him, uh, Travis Benjamin, run that same route against the Chargers, and I think it was a touchdown. And he ran that junk against me, Brandon Whedon threw the out, and I ended up picking it off, and it ended up being one of the you know the game winning things. But man, like Reed mm -hmm. taught me so much, man, about analyzing film, looking at guys' footwork looking at, uh, you know, splits, um, playing through the hands and just being real physical at the point of attack, man. And, uh, man, we had fun too, man. He was talking about having fun and all different types of stuff. Just, it was just a great experience, man. It's, it's something like no other, man. I played with a lot of great players, man, a lot of uh, potential Hall of Famers possibly, but it's, it's, it's only a few guys that I could say. And there's a lot of them in that organization with the Ravens, man, that just – just was a step ahead of the rest, man, was heads above the rest, man. So what was that 2012 Super Bowl run like for you um, just as a whole, the, the whole season and, and then the Super Bowl? What was that like for you to finally win one? Uh, man, uh, first of all, I'm going to say this. Like, I felt like our 2011 team was better than our 2012 team. And... Um, we just things just didn't go right, you know what I mean? Things just didn't go right. It did, it wasn't aligned. It wasn't in the stars that that night for us. But um, just to finally win it, man. Every year though, man, it's every year, and that's the thing I think that separates Baltimore from every other place. We talking about championships every year. It wasn't just oh we gonna make it to the playoffs. Oh, I wonder if we make it to the playoffs. No, we gonna win our division. We gonna compete in our division. And we're going to win a championship. That's what we're going for every year. It was never, I uh, you know, hope we could win six games. I hope we could win, you know, seven games. Every other organization wasn't talking about championships in, in Seattle. Seattle was the only place that really talked about a championship because they've been there before. They've experienced it. They got one. And, you know, that's the only thing that I could say that was similar to Baltimore was Seattle. In, in that respect. But man, like I said, it's just, in 2012, man, we, we didn't have a better team in 2011, but we had enough there. The nucleus of the team was there to keep everything together. Um, and, you know, I mean, we, we had 
it wasn't perfect. It wasn't a perfect season. We had issues. We had fired our damn office coordinator in the middle of the season, uh, which was crazy. And we ended up winning Super Bowl. So, man, it's just the resilience in that locker room. It was just the camaraderie, man. It's the ability to coach, you know, that that really stood above everything else too, man. Other organizations, man, it's, you'd be surprised. It ain't the, the, the quality of coaches ain't necessarily there. But in Baltimore, from top to bottom, like I said, man, it's an A1 organization, and you can't beat it. And um, man, we just we just had fun. It was a great opportunity for us to go out there and uh, repeat what we did. But we wanted to make sure that when we went to to New England, we was going to come out victorious, and we didn't want to leave a doubt this time. And we were able to to get it done, man. Things fell the way they were supposed to. And uh, – the trajectory of the game changed once Bernard Pollard had hit. I was about to ask Ridley, about that man. hit. Dog, I, shit. I was, man, I was on the sideline covering Hernandez, and we was just talking after while the play going on because he was just, you know, just talking. And we see the play happening, and we both, you know, got just talking, and the play happens, and it's blah! And you see this dude, like, does a split and the ball comes out. We both looked at each other and said, oh, shit. That might have been the craziest hit. And we just all kind of, like, we both kind of jog over there, like, in disbelief because it, it Bernard looked like a damn blur coming into that hole. It was just a blur. And you hear the sound, and it just sounded like a damn train wreck. And, Man, and, and that's the physicality of the defense, man. We we always was taught to come up and man and lay that wood on people, man, and uh force turnovers. And you know, that was a turning point in the season, turning point in the moment. And uh, you know, that was one of the craziest hits I ever seen, one of the loudest hits I ever heard on the field that didn't come from Ray Lewis. Wow. <laughs> you can go, Laurent. That is that's crazy. Yeah, indeed, indeed. So, uh, like you said, re- reliving, re- reliving that moment. So, at, 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 after the Super Bowl, what, what was the mindset? What was the mindset of the team going into that next year of the, uh, of the Super Bowl? What was that? What was that mindset in the locker room and all that? Did it change? Man, I wish I knew, dog, because I wasn't there. I wish I knew because okay. I ended up going to Philly after that, man. And um, really, I was the odd man out, man. Um, we had just had drafted Jimmy Smith in 2011, I believe, and uh, he was first round drafted. And yeah. We had just paid Ladarius Webb in 2011 for his outstanding season he had, amazing season he had. He got 50 million. And so I was the odd man, I was the third guy, and I knew they weren't gonna pay me. They had already paid Jimmy yeah. you know, a large sum of money, paid Webby a large sum of money. We had Reed on the books. Then we still had to pay, uh, uh, quarterback Flacco so I knew you know at some point you know the team wasn't gonna be the same and we always yeah. talked about that too every year the change the, the team changes but um you know the philosophy of what we bring to the table and what we want every year doesn't change so I wish I knew I don't think they made the playoffs that year um it was it was just, man, I, I don't know, man. I I, I really, got really got, got rid of, got rid of a lot of folks too. Got got rid of, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Everybody left, man. Like Q wasn't there. Um, who else had BP had left? Reed left. I was surprised they let Reed go. I thought he was gonna stay with the franchise forever. Yeah. Um. Uh. You know, everybody ended up going in, you know, their separate ways, man. I tell you what, like, if we were able to keep that team together, I don't know if we wouldn't be talking about a back-to-back situation or, you know, um, something to that degree, because I, I I do believe we we would have had a shot at it um, again. Indeed. But I, I, I never knew they – I never knew their mindset. I always wanted to know. I know they had said things changed, and, uh, and I heard they was having a lot more fun uh, when we left. And uh, – and people just was getting out in the streets, man. I heard Baltimore was live after that, man. That's what I heard. <laughs> <laughs> that shit used to be a lot, boy. Man, yeah. I, man I, I, and, you know, like, I, I heard about it. Like, man, dang, that's cool to hear, you know, what was going on, man. And I, I wish I was there, man. That's one of the things I'm going to say, like, I wish I um, was there. They didn't offer me 
much money. Um, and for me, I just wanted to secure my my family, man. And really, that's what it was about. If I could, have, if it wasn't about the money, if it, it it really wasn't, it was about the family and me trying to secure, uh, you know, generational wealth for me and my kids and give them an opportunity that I never had. So, but if it wasn't about that, man, I'd have, I'd have stayed in Baltimore, but it was a mm -hmm. lot of other things that led to that. I knew, you know, they was going to rehab Webby. I knew they was going to bring in Jimmy and we had a good nucleus at the DB in the DB room. So I knew somebody had to go. And yeah. I, and, and I, I made the move and, um, it ain't a day in my life that I don't think about that situation and making that move and wondering what if, if yep. I would have stayed, if I just did a one year deal, um, whatever, man. But you know, I, I that like I said, that organization is special, and um, and when I moved on, it was it was good times. It was good times in in Philly with those guys in their locker room too. But like I said, it just we wasn't talking about Super Bowls, man. We was just talking about making the playoffs. Yeah. And trying to get there and trying to beat Dallas and all that stuff and yeah, it's it's a difference in other organizations, you know what I mean? Very different. Very. That's how I was when I went to KC for that one year after leaving Baltimore. Man, it, it was so different in the sauna. Everything was just they talking about their cars. I'm like, man, we just lost forty one to three. Y'all talking about cars and all this, bruh? <laughs> you, you, I, I agree with you, dog. Cause, cause. Man, when you start when you start going outside of Baltimore, man, we had guys that had big names. We had guys that that could afford nice things. You know what I mean? But we just lived different lives. Nobody wasn't talking about that. That wasn't at yeah. the forefront of our mind. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like yeah. I don't care that I drove a bit. I don't care that you can afford a Bentley. Like that type of stuff don't matter to me, man. I'm here to play football, and I got one assignment, and that's that's to help this team win a game, man. Yeah. Me you driving yeah. a Bentley ain't gonna help us win a game man nobody don't we don't talk about conversations like that and it was like we had fun like we had our, we had fun but you know what i mean it'd be stuff like that like i ain't got hot tub we talking about cars come on man <laughs> <laughs> talking about trying to win a damn game man, I'm we you, about man. Damn car. trying to get trying, trying, trying to get to the playoffs that's what we were talking man. about man man we talking about playoffs. how physical this pittsburgh game gonna be man we ain't yeah. talking about that was man i like I said, man, it's it's just was different, dog. It's, it's a dip, and and I see a difference in parking lots too. Because, both, like I said, we had guys that could that could afford any and every car that they wanted, but they never brought those cars to the facility. And yeah. maybe maybe a couple of them, you know what I mean? Like Willis might have brought a whip to the facility that was dope. Ray might have bought a car that was to the facility that was dope. But like, it was never a topic of conversation. I never been around the crowd where they were just talking about vehicles and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but I mean, shit, Sizzle, Sizzle could have bought anything. <laughs> he ain't never yeah. talk about a car. You know what I mean? Like, you know, yeah. everybody died. We just never talked about that. We was talking about football and we'll crack jokes on each other and stuff like that. But it was more so, you know, business in there, man. It was more so yeah. business than uh, more so of, of a pleasure situation, which I can appreciate. Um, and then, you know, I think too, as the as I grew older and my career um, was going towards the end, I saw a wave of the young guys starting to you know talk about the vehicles, bringing the vehicles yeah. to the facility, saying that they got this, that, and the third. I didn't even know about cars until my last couple years um, in the league because that wasn't necessarily my focus. Yeah. I agree, I agree. You go, you go ahead, Ben. I'm pretty much done. You go ahead, Ben. Um, so I wanted to ask the, the pick that you had in the 2012 playoff game against the Patriots. Um, I still remember, you know, I was 12, big Ravens fan. I remember acting like I was on the field going crazy. But, you know, mm -hmm. the whole stadium's chanting for the Ravens, like Patriots fans run out. What was it like, you know, securing the interception and finally knowing, like, we're we're going to the Super Bowl, it's official? Off of Brady, the GOAT, too. Man, um, shit, I, I was just trying to make a play, man, and uh, seal it at that point. Once I saw the ball in there and it was coming towards me, I just wanted to clinch it. And then I remember running past uh, Reed and, uh, and Lou, and they was like, get down, get down. <laughs> so I made sure I slid. And... Uh, after that, he was like, hey, we did it. We did. And they were saying, we did it. We, hey, it's over. We, we got this. We're going to go to the Super Bowl. And I was just like, man, I was in disbelief, man, because 
I don't know if it, sometimes, I don't know. I, sometimes situations in the league just felt so surreal to me, man. Like I've had dreams of these things happening, but when they become, when they actually happen, it still feels like you living in this, like this, this different world, man. Like it's, it's almost like you're in a metaverse to a degree, but like, um, it was just surreal, man. I don't know. I, celebrating and just, you know, I just remember holding up the football um, and the crowd was just going crazy, man. And my teammates were congratulating me. Um, and I just wanted to, you know, do it for the team, man. And uh, that's really what it was about, man. Just securing something for the team, making sure that, you know, we'll, it don't come down to a kick. It then had to come down to, you know, uh, you know, if I had the chance to make a play, I just wanted to make the best of my opportunity, man. And I was able to do that. Fortunately, and yeah, it was, it was it was just a great experience, man. It was a great time. It was great. It was a great time, man. To come off the goat, man. It was cool, man. It was cool. It was cool, especially off of him, man. And that organization, man. Uh, we we got some bitter feelings. I still got some bitter feelings towards them. Um, and for that to come in that moment, it was great. It was a great experience. It was a great uh, feeling. It was great. Just a great great opportunity, man. I got the last laugh in that situation. The, the year before, did you think that that was a catch? I I remember watching it live. I I could have swore Lee Evans that that's a catch. I don't like it. It's a it's close. It's a tough play, but I I, I thought it was a catch. I, I still it still to me is a catch. I don't know. I, and I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna come from a DP standpoint. Hell no, I wouldn't catch. You gotta catch that. Like nah, <laughs> you got you got to catch. That was it. it. You got to secure the ball. Yeah, you got to secure the ball, man. You got to get your two feet in and. uh Hand the ball off to the ref, man. Like, that's what you got to do. But, man, um, in that situation, we still had a chance. We didn't get the kick. And, like I said, it just wasn't the line. It wasn't supposed to be, man. It just was what it was. We only lost three games that year, dude. Crazy. Three games that year. We, we, had, a, we had a squad. And we had one of the, you know, the best secondaries in it, you know, as far as, like, points. Yards allowed on on the field. Yeah, it was you know we played pretty well that that year. Yeah, y'all was raw. Y'all was y'all was raw that year, man. Y'all was raw that year for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure. Defense wise, everything, top to bottom. Yeah, yeah, man. I ain't know you went to Kansas City. I thought you went to San Diego first. No, I went to Kansas City for the one year. Then 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 uh then uh Kansas City then San Diego. Uh, how long you was in San Diego? For two years. Okay, all right. Yeah, because I feel like we played y'all twice, and I don't, yeah. I don't think – yeah, I remember seeing you. I remember yeah, seeing yeah, you. yeah, we played, played that one time. Yeah, we played the year y'all won it. The year y'all won it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Ray Rice had that crazy hey, diddle, diddle. fourth down. <laughs> yeah, that was crazy. Yeah, that yeah, was bro, insane. That was crazy, bro. I was, look, I was out, like, when, on that play, on that play, I was like, oh, shoot, this old where we got we got him. Then the play still was going on when I stood Man. up, got to, the, got to the field. I'm like, what's going on? Then he got that first down. That jump was crazy. Yeah, crazy, man. That, that, that would have been crazy. I don't, if we don't win that game, I don't know if we make the playoff. I don't think yeah. so. I don't yeah. think so. So I said, like, that jump, man, we man, we played good. That's probably, probably one of my best games, playing against your whole team. You know how that be. Uh-huh. Yeah. Be, how, how how did that feel? I'm gonna start turning to the interviewer, man. How did that feel going <laughs> against your old team? Man, off the chain, off the chain. Be ready all week. Be ready, man. Yeah. I'm, I'm so I'm so ready for that game, man. But even like afterwards, just just talking to everybody, you know what I'm saying? Vibing with everybody before before y'all got on the buses. All yeah. that all that was dope. Yeah, all that was dope. Just that that part was probably even better being on the field. Just yeah. vibing with everybody, talking to eyes and all that. So yeah. Uh, oh, that was straight. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Indeed. Yes, sir. Indeed. Yeah, man. That's what's up, man. That's what's oh, up, man. What, uh, what Bama finna do this year, man? Oh, man. We should. We should. We should do our thing. We should, man. You know, we should know. I got got Tennessee coming up. Big road yeah. game. That's you know what I'm saying. Tennessee number six. Then the move us number three. But we should be straight. We get Bryce back. We'll be all right. Yeah, man. Yeah, getting that cat back, man. That's a that's a, a big deal. Yeah, you already know it. Yeah, yeah, you are you already you already know. Hopefully we get back to that thing. Try to try to try to get this ship, man. I know we lost last year. Couldn't hear the end of Ella Ella B was on my ass last year. Yeah. Ella B was on me. He was on People me. can't wait to see Bama lose, dog. He can't wait, bro. He can't, <laughs> he can't wait. He can't stand Bama, bro. I'm talking about bro, can't yeah. stand him. He can't stand him, bro. Probably the same way I feel about Georgia though. Oh yeah. 
Yeah. Yes, indeed. But, bro, but, bro, man, we just, man, for real talk, just for me and I know for being, man, we just want to appreciate you for coming on here, man. You know what I'm saying? Taking the time out, you know what I'm saying? Share your story yeah. a little bit. Give people a little, little high side of yourself. Good talk to you. Good seeing you. Look good. You look good, nah, bro. I appreciate you know it. You saying? too, man. Look good and everything, bro, man. Glad you're doing good. Glad the fam, everybody doing good. You know what I'm saying? And You yeah. know what I'm saying? God bless you, bro. We really appreciate you. Yeah, man. We, I appreciate the opportunity, man. And thanks for the love, man. Appreciate you, man. It means a lot, dude. Thanks. Yes, indeed. Ben, you got something to say? Yeah, I got, I got one more thing. Um, you, you kind of talked before this a little bit, but it, it's good from somebody who played with LeBron. Do you have any stories? You, you talked a little bit before. Do you have any stories about LeBron when you were in the same locker room or something? Man, I just know he was just clown, man. That's all, man. Like, he, <laughs> he loved to have fun, man. <laughs> you know, to have fun. And I like I said, man, the, the dynamics in that locker room was so it was like it's yeah, man. Bro. I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't know who the hell got all them people together in one room. Who thought of that make, meshing that together and making that a team, man? But hats off to him, man. Got people from all different walks of life, man. Um, and that locker room was fun as hell, man. Yes, man, I'm talking about like just you you was at Frank Walker and all them cats, you was there, Corey. Yeah, yeah. Man, like, man. Just that little mix, man. That little mixture of just folks, man, coming together, bro. I could yeah. like locker room, locker room one. The, I want people I don't understand. Locker room one, the highlights probably at, at the Ravens, bro. Just the locker room, just the vibe, just the vibe, and just the vibe and just just chilling, even in the cafeteria and all that. Man, yeah, man. It was a family, it was a brotherhood, man. And I just like I said, man, we used to clown all the time. The Ron used to be the dude. Doing jokes on people, clowning people, man. And he was having a hell of a season too, man. The run from running back, t-shirts is flying around everywhere. I'm and telling the- you, man. <laughs> see, look, I'm trying to, I'm trying to monetize this. See, I, I was ahead of the game. I was yeah. ahead of the game then, man. Like they, they, they weren't feeling that, bro. Back in the day, they weren't feeling that. Man, I thought it was dope, <laughs> man. I thought it was cool, man. And uh, you know, I, I think like, like I said, man, our locker room was just special, man. We had a lot of special guys in, and LeRon added to that, man. And um, like I, I was a young guy then, man. I was just trying to find my way in the league, yeah. man. And those guys, LeRon took me in. I I got to sit around the table and, and eat and hear these dudes talking about certain things, man. And it was it was dope, man. It was a go, it was a great experience, man. LeRon was was a veteran player that had been around and. Um, like he was making something of himself in that time, and you know, I was glad to be a part of it and just say, "Hey, man, I was able. To, I got a, I got a Leron for running back T-shirt, man." <laughs> I appreciate you, bro. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Real top, man. Real top. Real top. Is they both been? Um, I forgot. I did forget to ask. I wanted to ask when you played during during your time. Um, who was your toughest wide receiver? to line up in front of and what was the toughest environment, you know, road environment for you when the Ravens or even the Eagles or any of them went on the road? Uh, let's see. Uh, I always say Andre was the toughest man when Julio was tough too. Calvin was tough. Um, AJ Green was tough. Um, Mike Wallace and them was tough, man. That whole Steelers yeah. Big Ben and they, man, they had a plethora of receivers, dog. That was now that was tough, man. Um, as far as like receiving core, they had to had to have the best receiving core in the league. Um, yeah. still is uh during my tenure. Um, uh, shoot, I man, any man, Randy Moss. I I played during Randy <laughs> during Randy Moss. Having his Moss uh, sessions, my first touchdown I gave up was against Randy Moss, man. Um, shoot, I, I, man, you, I, I can't say it's it's one in particular, man, because all of them were good, man. And I just felt like that era had so many different names, man. It yeah. didn't matter if you played for the Detroit Lions or you played for the, you know, the Browns, or you know, they still had somebody that could give you that work, and you had to respect them. Uh, so I respected everybody. I appreciated the opportunity just to cover them. But man, as far as like environments, and Pittsburgh was one of the roughest environments. Going to Seattle was one of the craziest environments. Um, 
I was gonna say playing at home, playing at home, just trying to hit a calls, doing like third downs and fourth downs and big time situations, man. It was hard as hell to play in at the bank, man. Just the yeah. I can't imagine what other other teams felt like when they came in there. Cause I couldn't hear. We had to do signals. We had to do hand signals the whole game. And I couldn't hear a dude that was two feet in front of me. Like I couldn't hear him. So, you know, I, I'm going to say the toughest probably was Pittsburgh. And that was probably one of my funnest, the, the probably the funnest place to play was Heinz Field at the time, man. And um, just seeing them terrible towels waving, man. It was like no other, man. <laughs> it was like no other. Hey, I was agree. you, hey, was you there when, uh, was you there when, uh, um, when what's the name had said something to to sizzle on the sideline. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, on the sideline. I don't, I don't even know. I don't, I don't even remember, man. I don't even remember. Yeah, no, you had to be. I think thing. you might have been there, cause I don't know. You might have been, or you might, or you might have been gone that year, man. Those games was funny as hell, man. Ike was the so one. So funny. Ike was the one on kickoff return, man. He had said something to our sideline, man. I thought you was there. If you was there, then you know what I'm talking about. You might not have been there. Yeah, man. No, I said no thing. No used to be. No thing used to be. No thing used to be crazy at home or away. At home or away. And then even I know, to... man. Hey, and the next week, boy, you you ain't want to put on no pads the next week, I'm man. Telling, it's about three days, dog. I'm telling you, I'm telling. That was people I try to tell people. I said, bro, I had to block James Harrison ass, bro. Like it was crazy, <laughs> man. Man, even even Heinz Ward blocking you as a corner was. I was like, come on, bro. Like what? It's just extra, man. But yeah, it, it yeah, was yeah. physical, man. It was a physical game, man. Crazy, physical man. game. Crazy. Crazy. And I ain't never been a part of nothing like that either. I mean, playing the Cowboys is cool, but they weren't like – Cowboys was big. They was always some big dudes, but – and the Giants was big dudes too, but they wasn't as physical as them. Yeah. Pittsburgh, man. Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh had a yeah. different type of it physical. Like, it wasn't like, yeah, it wasn't nothing like that. No, no other level. No other level like that game, man, for real. Yeah, yeah. man, that's, that, that, that's one of my best games. I, I love I love playing in that environment. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, anything, anything more, Ben? No, 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 that's it. Uh, like LeRon said, man, I really appreciate you coming on, uh, taking that time out. We'd love to have you on again later in the year. Um, you know, if you're ever free, because it, it was awesome talking to you. You gave some really, really cool insight. It was really, really fun interview. All right, cool, man. I'm, I'm, I'm open, man. Um, if y'all need me, man, hit me up. Got you, bro. Appreciate you, bro. God bless you, bro. Good seeing yeah. you, baby. Looking yes, good. sir. Good seeing you too, man. Yes, Thank sir. you, dog. Yes, you look good too. Yes, sir. Appreciate you, baby. Yes, sir.